So, it's happening. We are currently living through the digital communication revolution. Humanity is new and creative mediums for interaction, self-expression, and exploration that just cannot be compared to anything we've had at any other point in history. And with the development of dynamic communication and information tools such as Web 2.0, mobile devices, social networks, and Hadoop. The world has become more interconnected through digital technology. Individuals, businesses, and organizations have increasingly seen the value of analyzing and engaging their audiences with these tools. And through these technologies, it is now possible for information to be created, collected, distributed, accessed, stored, analyzed, and experienced in unparalleled capacities. Every two days now, we create as much information as we did from the dawn of civilization up until the year 2003. And this information known as big data, is often produced through observation and analytic softwares used on the web and various Through the use of big data, marketers can access information about how to cater to their targeted groups. Insight about users enables products and services to be promoted on a highly personalized yet massive scale. They also help to fuel innovation that lead to new services and business models that can support economic growth. Now while these tools may have many advantages for both message promoters and their user market, the use of big data raises some serious concerns. Scholars remind us that big data is less about data that is big then it is about a capacity to search, aggregate, and cross-reference large data sets. Mankind not only has the ability to collect large amounts of data about individuals and collective groups, but more importantly, we have sophisticated and in-depth tools for making meaning. Consideration should be given to important questions such as, who gets access to big data, for what purposes, in what contexts, and with what constraints. This how-to video explores the ethics of big data and web analytics. It will seek to develop an ethical guideline for ways businesses, organizations, and marketers should acquire, use, and protect the information of people in their target market without violating user rights to various forms of privacy. Forms of privacy include privacy of person, thought, association, location, and communication. So the real question is, what's the big deal about big data? Why should businesses, organizations, and marketers be concerned about information privacy? Well, a prediction in the Financial Times suggests that through 2016, 25% of organizations using consumer data will face reputational damage due to inadequate understanding of information trust issues. Further, it states that 20% of chief information officers in regulated industries will lose their jobs for failing to implement the discipline of information governance successfully. In other words, the unethical collection and use of markets data has a potential to hurt your brand and your business. As people grow in awareness and knowledge about privacy vulnerability, they will be looking to have their products and services provided by businesses and organizations that are as vested in protecting their privacy as they are. 
And that's why trust is the new competitive advantage. Next, we need to determine what best practices and strategies can be used to maintain subject confidentiality and trust going forward. Leading international expert on information privacy law, Dr. Paul M. Schwartz from the Center of Information Policy Leadership, has developed some overarching requirements for information management. First, he emphasizes the importance of complying with legal restrictions as it is obviously unethical to violate just the laws. But going a step further, he also suggests that the use of analytics should reflect societal and cultural norms. An example could go like this. If it's not socially acceptable to record someone's daily life or survey them without their permission or awareness, and online users' activities should not be collected or recorded without their permission or knowledge as well. Also, Schwartz asserts that at each stage of the use of big data analytics, a company should have accountable processes that provide safeguards proportionate to the risks. As data accessibility increases, the chances of mishandling sensitive information increase as well. Before granting access, risk managers should ensure that internal policies and procedures on data usage are in place. Also, they should ensure that those policies have been communicated to those collecting and analyzing data. When attempting to integrate and analyze data, it's a good idea to anonymize information whenever it's appropriate. Also, make sure that you are using data that is accurate, complete, and up-to-date. In addition to Schwartz's work, the OECD has also created some additional guidelines. They also suggest that the data should be collected with the consent or awareness of the data subject. Additionally, they assert that the purpose of data use should be specified before the data is collected. Also, the data subsequent use should be limited to those initial specifications. Personal data should not be disclosed, made available, shared, or used for any purposes other than those initially specified, unless consent has been given by the user or by the authority of the law. Finally, according to the OECD guidelines, there should be a general policy of openness about developments, practices, and policies relating to personal data. Transparency builds trust. Online users, audiences, and data subjects should have the right to know if data is being collected about them. They should also have the right to challenge false information about them and to have misinformation erased, rectified, completed, or changed. Companies should be transparent about that process and complete the requests within a timely manner. Protecting privacy involves giving people control over who has the power to share, collect, cross-reference, or publicize information about them. Remember, companies, organizations, or marketers are not socially independent entities. That's why they should seek to be recognized as being socially responsible and considerate. Those using big data 
should consider the interest of their stakeholders, which would include consumers, other businesses, NGOs, government, and the larger public. Doing so will improve customer relations, build trust, prevent reputational damages, and potential legal liabilities. Remember, when we protect privacy, we don't just do it to protect our business interests, but we're protecting people. And that's a great thing to be a part of. So let's do big data better. For everyone.